Hello everyone, we have yet another missing young man, but this time out of California, and time is of the essence because he disappeared just days ago. 26-year-old Charles Alex Benfield is a Marine Corporal at Camp Pendleton, which is a Marine Corps base camp located in North County and around 38 miles north of downtown San Diego. Charles is originally from North Carolina and loved being part of the Marines so much that he had just re-enlisted for another four years. Last week, on the weekend of April 13th of 2024, Charles left his base camp to spend the weekend in downtown San Diego. However, things would take a turn when Charles was arrested for public intoxication and then later taken to be detained overnight at the McAllister Institute Recovery and Bridge Center at 2506 Market Street, which is a center for alcohol and drug recovery that offers multiple different programs, including outreach, interventions, deferral entry programs, outpatient treatments, short-term residential, long-term residential, and sober living. So he was essentially taken from the police station to a private rehab facility. Sunday morning, which was now April 14th, he was allegedly released from the facility around 11:30 a.m the front desk staff telling authorities and i quote he was saying he was scared he was going to lose his rank because they had to meet that following morning at 8 a.m which he had obviously missed he said he needed to find his phone so he was going to go search for that end quote so essentially when charles was released from this rehab facility he went off looking for his phone in downtown san diego it seems meaning he must have left the facility with no phone on him, just like what happened in the Harley Morris case, which we've covered. And this all means that there is no way to track Charles. It's also been stated that he was acting paranoid when he left the facility. However, it wasn't just a Sunday morning meeting that Charles was going to miss, because as Monday rolled around, he was still nowhere to be seen despite being released the day before. A communication director with the Marines released a statement saying, and I quote, Corporal Charles Benfield, a field artillery cannoneer assigned to battalion leading team 15th 15 Marine Expeditionary Unit, did not report for duty the morning of April 15th following weekend liberty in the San Diego area. The 5th MEU was aware that Corporal Benfield was detained by San Diego police April 14th and released later that day. Once 15th MEU was made aware of his release, Marines from Corporal Benfield's unit searched the downtown San Diego area trying to locate him. The safety and accountability of our Marines and sailors is a top priority. The 5th MEU has requested the assistance of the Naval Criminal Investigation Service and will continue to attempt to locate Corporal Benfield to ensure his well-being." End quote. So it does seem like the military was searching for Charles in the downtown San Diego area pretty much immediately after he was released. However, they couldn't find him. That is what I'm getting from that. Now here's the issue though with Charles being in the military. Because he is considered active duty and because the Naval Criminal Investigative Service is investigating this right now, it seems like San Diego police can't declare him a missing person even though he clearly seems to be. His sister Sarah Lazo saying, and I quote, we're all worried this isn't normal behavior for Alex, just to leave and not have any contact with anyone, especially my mom. I can understand him being scared to show up after missing a meeting, but to completely fall off the face of the earth basically is unlike him at all, end quote. And what do I always say? I think we should trust the family when they say it's out of character for him to act like this. If Charles is always texting people and being in contact with people and he's never ran away or gone MIA or AWOL or missed any of his meetings before, that is completely unlike him. So clearly in this instance, in my opinion, it seems like something is wrong if he's now completely dropped off the face of the earth. The family has tried calling hospitals, they've tried calling hotels, even the medical examiner, yet there is no sign of trolls anywhere. They are no closer to figuring out where he is. His family's even started a Reddit page to try to spread the word on his disappearance since police clearly can't investigate because the military is currently investigating and they're not giving the family any information. Stating on this Reddit post, and I quote, our brother slash son is missing from the San Diego area. He is an active duty Marine stationed at Camp Pendleton that was on deployment on a ship. They experienced issues and had to dock in San Diego area. More info is in the ad above, which was a link to an article, which is all the information that I'm talking about right now. But back to the quote. His superiors slash command aren't helping much and don't have him labeled as a missing Marine. Instead, an unauthorized absence, which he would not do. He does not drink to get drunk, especially public, as we assume he was drugged while out and about end quote. Which where have we heard something similar once again? The Riley Strain case. As I said, it was stated that he seemed to be paranoid when he was leaving the rehab facility. And yes, he's 26. If he wanted to go out for the weekend and let loose and get drunk, that's completely his own inhibition. There's nothing against that. However, he seemed to be so out of it, just like in the Riley Strain case where Riley got kicked out of the bar because he was so intoxicated. And now here in this case with Charles, he's getting arrested because he's so intoxicated in public. And now in the aftermath, people are questioning 
what may have happened to them because it was unlike them to act like that when they got drunk. On top of that, family has stated on the Reddit article that they've been told by other military members that it's common for them to be drugged with PCP and that that drug causes you to act the way that Charles did the day after. So it begs the question, could Charles have been drugged? Now here's where things get strange because Charles left the facility to go look for his phone. However, according to the little bit of information that is out there, Charles's phone was said to be dead and it last pinged at the San Diego Police Department, which means it does seem like he was taken there before he was transported to the rehab facility. So my understanding would then be if his phone last pinged at the police department, that means his phone was on him when he was transported to the police department and it wasn't left at a bar or something like that. Yet you would think then that authorities have his phone, but it seems like they don't. His phone wouldn't be missing then because it should be at the police station, you would think. But then if it's not at the police station, he should have brought it to the rehab facility. So shouldn't it have been at the rehab facility? But if he had it on him at the rehab facility, you think the rehab would know that because I'm sure they do pat downs or whatever, like go through all of your belongings. But then why would he leave the rehab facility to go look for his phone if he had his phone? That's the whole confusing part of this. It's really strange, honestly. But it gets stranger because it would turn out that Charles's bank accounts have been completely drained. There's not a dollar left in them, it seems. And from what it looks like, the money was taken out in several different large amounts. However, there's no records to show at this point in time if they were taken out from ATMs, through a bank teller, if they were taken out like online somehow, maybe like through Cash App or something like that. And I wanna hope that police do know where the money came out from and where it was taken out from, if that was from different bank ATMs or something like that, like the locations of that. But at this point in time, the public doesn't know this information and the family doesn't know this information. So it's all up in the air. All anyone knows is that his bank account was completely drained. Another thing that's strange about Charles's disappearance is that he disappeared in the middle of the day if he was released from that facility around 11.30 a.m. What's also odd is that he wasn't just put into a drunk tank at a jail, but then he was transported to a rehab facility that's seemingly private and for, you know, addicts. Some people are speculating whether that may be because it's like a third party place that they tank from the drunk tank overflow if it's too full or possibly that the police just transport people there when they are that intoxicated or acting erratically, possibly due to drugs because the facility has better ways to help people that are in that state compared to just, you know, police officers at a drunk tank. Which honestly, if that's the case, that's actually a good thing in my opinion, because we have seen so many times people die from being, you know, overly intoxicated and overdosing in jail cells while they're in the drunk tank. So if they are now, you know, transporting people to facilities like this where they can be better taken care of, I think that's a great thing. However, it is just strange because it feels like no one's really heard of something like this before, but it might just be a common occurrence. Let me know if you have any information on that. So let's talk about these events that we know about. We know that Charles left the facility on a mission to go look for his phone and we know that his bank account was drained. Now we don't know when his bank account was drained and we don't know where, but we know it's drained. And again, he went looking for his phone, but his phone last pinged at the police station. So it's very odd. So it does beg the question, did Charles meet foul play when he went back to downtown San Diego because he was looking for his phone. He didn't know where it was. But then again, it was the middle of the afternoon. Not that crime stops because the sun's out, but usually things like that happen late at night because not a lot of people are around, shadier people are out, and there's better opportunity to commit crimes. So the assumption would be if he went to go look for his phone, you'd think he would have went to the area of the bars he was last at before he was arrested. So is there any camera footage of him going back there looking for his phone? Does anyone remember like any bar bartenders or anything like that, him being there and losing his phone. Do they remember him coming back looking for it? And then it also makes me question how erratically was he acting that he was arrested for public intoxication? What all led up to that as well? That's all information we don't have because the Marine police and the authorities involved with, you know, the military are just so quiet and tight lipped. It makes me question when he was arrested, did he have his wallet on him? Could his wallet have been stolen the night before when he was so drunk, if he left it somewhere or someone took it from him? Or could he possibly have put his credit card or a card up on a tab at one of the bars and then that got lost and stolen and that's how the money was taken out if it wasn't taken out by him? It makes me question if he was the one to take the money out of say ATMs 
is there camera footage of him taking the money out? Because there are tons of cameras at banks. There should be camera footage if he went to ATMs of whoever it was taking the money out. I think we also have to address the fact that it is stated that Charles is only five foot four. So he is a smaller individual. So he could have been overpowered by a much larger person, I think. I think it definitely is possible or a multiple other larger people. I think because there is such limited information, kind of anything is up in the air at this point because we don't know what led up to him being arrested for public intoxication. We don't know where he went after he left the facility because there's no way to track him. It makes me question, do authorities have his phone? Was it at the police station still? And they're just not saying anything. It also makes me run through the questions of why would Charles take all the money out of his account if it was him? And how much money are we talking about? Is it only a couple hundred dollars he had or is it thousands of dollars? And when you think about him taking his own money out and running off somewhere, because that seems to be what, you know, the police at this point, or I guess, you know, the military police are thinking, it makes me question why he would do something like that. Because it doesn't make sense to me that if he just missed one meeting because he was in the drunk tank and possibly it wasn't even his fault if he was possibly drugged, as we talked about, why he would decide to escalate the situation and make it even worse by running away. Like it's a worse situation going AWOL from the military than simply missing one meeting. Like in my opinion, he probably would have just got a slap on the wrist compared to going AWOL and now running off somewhere if that's what he did. That just doesn't make sense to me in the grand scheme of things, you know? But I mean, if he was to run away, Mexico is only a 35 minute drive from San Diego. So I guess it is possible in a way that he could have taken all his money out and ran to Mexico or something to, you know, flee for whatever reason. But then again, his family said it wasn't like him at all. That wasn't something he'd do. He also, as we talked about in the beginning, just re-signed a four-year contract with the military. It was something he loved. That it was his whole entire life being in the military. It was his passion. So why would he re-sign another four-year contract if over just one minor inconvenience, he was going to go AWOL? It just doesn't line up for me. I just don't see that tracking. Again, there's just so much information we don't have that kind of anything is on the table right now. I would really like to know if police have found his phone, if they do have his phone, that's a big piece of information. If not, it just doesn't make sense how it went missing if it was at the police station last. Did it leave the police station after that and go with him to the facility? That's a big question I have. On top of that, did he have his wallet with him when he was arrested? Police should know that information as well. That would have been something that was logged when he was charged. It also makes me wonder, do police have any information on how the money was taken out from his accounts or any video footage of him anywhere in the city or video footage of the money being taken out if it was taken out somewhere like an ATM? I'm also really curious if there are any witnesses from around when he was arrested. Was he with anyone? Was he just off on his own all night partying? Like you think he'd have some friends or something with him. There's just so much that we don't know. But what I do wanna know is what you all think. Please share this video out because Charles is still missing and we have no information on where he is or what happened to him. Share his missing persons flyer out, share this video out, share anything that you can out, especially if you live in the San Diego area, keep your eyes out because he just went missing a few days ago as I'm filming and posting this video. Time is of the essence in the immediate days after someone goes missing. So let's take a look at Charles once again. He is 26 years old and said to be about five foot four and around 170 pounds with dark brown hair and brown eyes. He has a tattoo of a skull as well as flowers with a knife through it and another with the initials R-A-H. If you have any information, please contact the NCIS. I'll have their information down below. If you know something or see something, please say something. Let's bring Charles home to his family and I will keep you all updated as more vital information comes out. As always, I hope you all stay safe out there, lock your windows and doors, and I hope to see you in the next video.